Are you serious? Are you serious? I'm so glad you guys are here. We're doing communion again. And uh, we know there are people that are trying to find it right now. I'm just going to give it just a few moments here and uh, prepare for communion. I'd like for you to do a couple of things. If you haven't done it already to get the uh, bread and the wine, I have here, of course, some unleavened bread that I'm going to be breaking, uh, which is, of course, represent, of course, the body of Christ that was broken for us at Calvary. And I also have some uh, grape juice here that uh, I'm, is going to represent, of course, the blood of Christ that I'm going to be drinking uh, as part of the communion. So as you get your bread and wine together, we'll get ready to take communion uh, with the Lord. And, uh, you know, as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. I believe in this powerful, sacred moment that God wants to infuse into your body his anointing because you're communing with him and it's the bread of life and the, and the life is in the blood and it's such a powerful, powerful thing to take communion unto the Lord with one another in the body of Christ, okay? Thank you. And please be respectful to this communion service if you're watching this or you just came up on this YouTube video. It is greatly appreciated by God himself and these who are watching. Uh, I'm going to play a song right now as we're waiting for everybody to get in. And so here is Kevin Wilson singing a song, When I See the Blood. Said crying over on the cross, her son was dying. She watched as they drove the nails and him and pierced his side. When he said it is finished, she saw her son and he died. Oh, but I see the blood that gives me my salvation. The blood that was shed. For all God's creation And the blood that I saw Still holds all the power It keeps you and me God's final hour Stand alone. See, I stand here crying. Or in my mind, I see our Savior is dying. Though darkness surrounds him. Satan's angels, they sing Through God's only Son Yeah, the victory was won Oh, I see the blood That gives me my salvation the blood that was shed for all God's creation, and the blood that I saw still holds all the power that keeps you and me. Final hour It keeps you and me, you and me, for 
And certainly as we're taking communion this afternoon, uh, we want to welcome all of you uh, to this communion service. If you would, if you haven't done it yet, go right ahead and get your bread. Of course, there I have unleavened bread here. Uh, some of you may not have unleavened bread, but if you have crackers, uh, that is unleavened, and you could use crackers, okay? So it's important to use unleavened because Jesus had no leaven in him. He had no sin in him, okay? So you can use unleavened bread, crackers. It's good to have that available uh, so you can take communion at any time while you're home. Also, I'm using uh, grape juice. Some people use grape juice. Some people use wine. This represents the blood of Christ. And uh, I'll be drinking this uh, as uh, part of the communion I have with Jesus Christ and the victory I have. Okay, And I want you to realize that in Jesus' name. Um, now, I want to take you to Philippians chapter 3 for just a moment and read from the scriptures here. It's very important that we understand how powerful the crucifixion and the resurrection is. And we have to have part, we have to be partakers of Christ's suffering if we want to understand the power of his resurrection. Now, you've heard people say, and it, it's just, it's just misunderstanding. So no, no condemnation here. I'm not putting out. But you've heard people say, you know, there's a, people have crosses and people have crucifixes. And most of the time, not always, because I, I have crucifixes as well as crosses. I understand the difference that they're the same. They both represent the suffering of Jesus Christ. We're not putting our Savior back on a cross because you see a crucifix. But what we are doing is recognizing and communing with his sacrifice, with his suffering at the cross. And so Paul said the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness, but to us that are saved, it's the power of God. Now, so it's not any reason to fall out with people and, and, and people shouldn't attack each other over this because it's, it's really, uh, it's, a, it's an argument that doesn't need to be there. But what you will find out is that the, the crucifix or the cross, whichever you're using, the cross of Calvary uh, is where Christ died on that cross for our sins. And it's very important uh, that we understand that. But we have to do more than just understand the story. We have to participate or partake in his suffering that we may understand or receive the power of his resurrection. Let me read it for you. Paul says this, this is in Philippians chapter 3. If you go to Philippians chapter 3, it's a great chapter, but I'll start reading at verse uh, uh, 8. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered for the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, speaking of Christ, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings made being made conformable unto his death if by any means i may attain unto the resurrection of the dead in other words if i'm going to raise in his likeness if i'm going to be uh, come from the grave i need to participate in dying out to sin i need to to surrender my will to god i need to crucify the flesh and become a sanctified vessel of the Lord, sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, washed in the precious blood of the Lamb, and filled with the anointing and the joy of God, that I receive this all by faith. 
in grace through faith, not of myself. It's a gift of God. I'm sorry, not of works, least any man should boast. And so it's a powerful, powerful, powerful understanding in the word of the Lord. I'm sorry about that with the microphone. Now, if you'll go with me to the book of Luke, uh, we're going to go again to the 22nd chapter. There's a lot of different places in the Bible we could use for the communion, but I, I really feel like I should use this one again today. So let's begin reading in the King James Version of the Bible in Luke chapter 22. The Bible says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way, and he communed with the chief priest and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and coveted to give him money. They made an agreement. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them into the absence of a multitude. So Judas says, I'll do it, but it's going to be when the, when the crowds aren't around. I'm going to do it at night. I'm going to betray him. And uh, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare? Where do we go to set up this communion, this last supper, as, as we call it, but the communion of the Passover meal? And because they didn't even have any, they didn't have a place to go. And Jesus said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the goodman of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he sh shall show you a large upper room, furnished there, make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. So they prepared the meal. Now, it's very important for you to know that, the, that where this room was at, an upper room of this house, is the same room that later 120 would gather in on the day, on the Feast of the Pentecost. And on the day of Pentecost, the fire of the Holy Ghost would come and set upon all of them. And they'd be filled with the fire and the power and the tongues and flames of God. And uh, it would happen in this same room. So in the same room that they take the communion with Christ and, and he surrenders his will to the Father, that same room gets the anointing of the Holy Ghost that falls in the same place. And I've been to that room many times. And I love when I go to Israel, I love taking groups there to experience the presence of that upper room. Well, let me read on here. Here's what it says. Now, um, so they made things ready for the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, which desire I, which desire have I desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. So he prepares for the communion, for the supper. Now, what we want to do, and we want to thank all of you that are here, and those of you who are watching this on the archives, hopefully YouTube will allow it to stay up and not take it down like the last one. Uh, but this is the, uh, the bread. I have uh, unleavened bread. 
and I'm going to use this. This is going to, as representing the body of Jesus Christ. And also I have here a glass of grape juice. Some of you have grape juice. Some of you may have wine. And, but it is representing the body, I mean, excuse me, the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. And we're going to drink that in communion with Christ. Uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your being very merciful to us. And once again, we come to as a memorial unto you, Jesus. We're going to take of your, take of your bread, of your body, and drink of your cup, of your blood, in communion with you. God made this online church from different parts of the nation and around the world. May they receive and fellowship with your suffering that they might be able to experience the power of your resurrection. Give us power over the devil. We have it, we know. But we want to be released upon us even a, a stronger and deeper experience in the Holy Ghost and in the presence of you. Lord, if we've committed any sin, and Father, I just know that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none of us righteous, not one. So forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from our iniquities. And Lord, we present ourselves pure and holy before you, not by our righteousness, because we don't have any. It's like filthy rags, Lord, but by your righteousness and your love and your cleansing power, we present ourselves to you to commune in the holy communion with Christ. And we do it together, Lord, in remembrance of you. And we thank you for your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. What I would like for you to do now is take um, the... Give me one second here because I would you like for you to do this. Take the bread, if you would. And let's look at verse 19. And the Bible says... And he, speaking of Jesus, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave unto them saying, and I'm going to do that. Let's do this now. Breaking the bread, which is representing the breaking of his body on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He took, he took the bread. He took the bread and he held it up. He took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And likewise, then Jesus picked up the cup. Imagine what he knew it was, was going to happen to him and how that blood would flow from the anguish of the cruelty of the cross. And he's a king. He's the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the son of God, who allowed himself to come and become a mortal man to suffer and to take on the likeness of sinful flesh so that it's sin in the flesh, he could condemn it and give us redemption. So he took the cup. Likewise, verse 20, he also the cup after supper saying, this is the cup. Praise the Lord. This is the cup, the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And so 
He said, as often as you do this, drink all of it. And as often as you do, do in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the power and for the glory and for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for his cleansing power. Thank the Lord for his saving grace. Thank the Lord that we have the anointing that breaks every yoke, that we are the sons of God, heirs of the throne and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for this communion upon your body of believers. Pour out your spirit, Lord, I pray in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost in Jesus name. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name, Emmanuel. Oh, you're a wonderful counselor, the almighty God, the Prince of Peace. You're the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. You're, you are the shelter the, uh, for us during the storm, the cleft of the rock you dwell in. Hallelujah. And we're underneath the shadow of your of you, almighty God, under the uh, under the, the wings of your protection. And we praise you, Jesus, not only for what you did at Calvary as you suffered and died, but what you did on that third day when the, the stone had to be rolled away and you came forth as the glorified, brilliant body of the Lord and Savior who conquered sin, sickness, death, and spiritual darkness, we praise your holy name. And we thank you, Lord, for this amazing online church of people who are committed to Christ, who intercede in prayer, who pray, God, not only for their own families and their own souls and their own friends, but for people who are out there that they know are lost. And they want to see a mighty move of God, and we need a mighty move of God. So we thank you, Jesus, for our healing, because by your stripes, we are healed. And we thank you for our restoration. We thank you for your blessings that you put upon us, Lord. Some, so many that we don't have room to even contain them. We thank you for what you've done in what you're going to do and what you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen, and amen, and amen, and amen, and hallelujah to the Lamb of God, and praise His holy name, praise His holy name. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, and sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stays. The dying thief rejoiced to see a fountain in his day. And there may I go bow as he wash all my sins.
church of God be saved to sin no more. Right. Be saved to sin no more. Be saved to sin no more. Till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no just such a beautiful beautiful song blessed assurance jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of his glory divine heir of salvation purchase of god Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. It's perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. I'm watching and waiting. I'm looking above. <laughs> Filled with his goodness, I'm lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, oh, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. One more verse. Death could not hold you. You are victorious. Praise to the risen King for what he did for us. Death could not hold you. You are victorious, praise to the risen King and what he did for us. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story and this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. I hope you have a great, great rest of your day. And uh, as we were eating the unleavened bread, know this. Jesus was the Passover lamb and his blood was shed and it's on the doorpost of your heart. And as his body laid in the grave today, during uh, that day, he became the unleavened bread that you ate 
in your communion with him. But tomorrow, tomorrow, on the third day, he comes from the grave. He rises with power and great glory. God bless all of you. I love you guys. See you tomorrow. Uh, I'll be preaching. Uh, Pastor Melvin Whittington will be preaching, and I'll be preaching. We're going to do a double header tomorrow at church, and uh, we're tag teaming. One message, two preachers. May it be a confirmation of the coming of the Lord. God bless all. You can see it live on www.ffctv.org. That's www.ffctv.org. Thank you all for being a part of this amazing online church. God's using you. He's using you, using all of us to touch the world.